Forget birthdays. I'm on the, I'm on the road of uh, forgetting them and trying to add them. Uh, you know, in, in these, uh, these weeks where we don't play on Saturdays, uh, really just get out on the field. Uh, today, it's, you know, as a coach, you, you love them because you get to go over all of the mistakes that you made in the passing game, the running game, um, clean those things up, which we got a chance to do that. Uh, fundamentals, uh, we got a lot of individual today. Um, and then we got to scrimmage the young guys, you know, that haven't played. So, you know, as a coach, those, these are as good as they get um, because you, you, you don't have a game on the other end of it. So um, good day today, and we'll do similar tomorrow. Um, and, and then uh, Thursday, we'll, uh, we'll weight train, and, and then we'll give them Friday, Saturday, and Sunday off. So they'll get three days off. And when I say off, um, it's really active recovery. So it's a mental and physical reset, but you know, we, we have them doing things. Uh, Cause you can't take three days off. I mean, that's, there's no, all of a sudden I'm just gonna lay around and not do anything for three days. Um, so it's just, a, it's just a reset mentally and physically. And um, you know, a lot of our guys are local. Um, so the training room will be open. Um, the ability to come in here, get treatment. Um, some of the guys will have light workouts too. So that's kind of what the week looks like in a nutshell. And, and then um, it affords us the opportunity to use Monday, you know, kind of as a bonus day as well. So that's kind of what what's going on this week. What's going on in your world? Same. Cool. No cool. No days off. Of course not. Hey, Coach. Um, there was a hit on Jaden Daniels in the second quarter that was called for targeting but rescinded. Um, what makes this penalty so confusing? Well, there, there, there's, there's kind of protocols there, right? Um, I, I think, as I understand it, um, you know, it, it's better to, um, you know, administer, you know, what would seem to be as um, a late hit or, you know, uh, roughing, and, and then let them slow it down and, and get it frame by frame to determine whether there's targeting in that situation. Because if you call targeting in that situation and it isn't targeting, then you lose the opportunity to have a unnecessary roughness call. Um, so, look, I, I got my hands full coaching. OK, um, it, but it just seems to me that that might be the way to, to go about administer it. Now, I, there's a supervisor of officials um, and, and he's really smart and he knows what he's doing. Um, but, you know, those are kind of the things that, that you're looking to see happen in those situations. And I think that that's what happened the second time. The second time there was, an, there was an unnecessary roughness call first, so you knew you were going to get the penalty there. And then if there was targeting, let them look at it and, and figure out whether there was targeting. We got a little time, and I was just wondering if you could kind of expunge on how your staff goes about making the defensive adjustments. Clearly, there's more work than you know, a halftime speech. So how much of that is prep work with the game plan and the scouting? And then how quickly does it get implemented you know, in the first, second quarter, because they've done such a great job of making those adjustments. Well, uh, we'll, we'll meet. I'll meet with Matt and, and the defensive staff. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about some things as he comes down. Remember now, he's about two minutes behind everybody because he's got to come out of the press box. So uh, we'll have everybody together in, in the locker room, share some ideas, and then when Matt comes in, he's kind of – He's already kind of formulated some thoughts. We'll discuss those thoughts, and and you got to imagine we don't have much time then to get with the team because I want to get them out of the locker room at about the six minute mark. You know, get them up, talk to them, get them in the tunnel, and get them on the field by four. So all that needs to be done in in a matter of minutes. Um, we had some substantial adjustments that needed to be made. Sometimes you don't have quite as many. 
we had to do some things in coverage. You know, they were hurting us, you know, with some switch verticals. Um, and, and, and Matt already had formulated in his mind as he was coming down from the box some things. He throws them off me. Uh, you know, we have a conversation and he goes to work on it. So we're set up in pods in the locker room. So each position group's in pods. We've got whiteboards there. He gets on the whiteboard, puts up the adjustments. We go to work and, and uh, the guys digest it and did a really good job and we go out and try to execute it. Hey, Coach, right here. Uh, just, you know, an opportunity this week also presents itself on the recruiting trail for you and your staff. Just yeah. uh, what are the goals, I guess, you have for an open date in terms of getting out and seeing high school players? And just what, what do you hope to get out of this week in that regard? Yeah, so um, we'll send out Coach Polian after practice today. He'll be the first one out. So we did all of our special teams today. So that allows him to get out, get the first run out, because um, we're sending him you know, a little further out. Um, and then tomorrow after practice, the staff is, is all out on the road. So we'll get everybody else out on the road. And so um, that gets us Wednesday, Thursday. And, and I want to get the, the staff heading back after um, Wednesday morning where they touch base with, with a recruit Wednesday morning in, in uh, an evaluation uh, sense. So they can be back here for uh, Friday night. So they can be with their families uh, Friday and Saturday. Um, what we're trying to accomplish essentially is, is get with our, our committed players uh, as much as we can. And then, you know, our top 24. So this is a combination of 23s and, and 24s. Uh, Coach, right here, you've had success guarding mobile quarterbacks such as Anthony Richardson and Jackson Dart. How important is that now that you face a quarterback like Bryce Young? <laughs> yeah, I mean, they, they've all been so difficult uh, to defend, and, and this will be the most difficult. Um, and, and I think what's most difficult with him is um, improvising, you know, his ability to improvise, and as he improvises, He's making plays, like he's getting the ball out to uh, skilled players. So um, an enormous, uh, I think, challenge uh, for our defense uh, to contain him in some fashion. And maybe, maybe you even, you know, have to look at, you know, how, how do you slow him down a little bit because he just uh, is that good of a player. Uh, hey, Brian, uh, there was so much discussion earlier in the season about sort of around the offense with tempo and getting the ball snapped above 15 seconds because it was maybe what was working best for Jaden. It seems like the last two games, that hasn't necessarily been what's caused the change in the last two games. So maybe even without tempo, why, why is that working so well now, uh, even though you all aren't trying to go super, super fast? Well, early on it was, um, you know, if, if, j just to give you a perspective, when you go fast, Things are a lot. They have to be simpler. Um, the reads have to be much more singular because protections have to be one-dimensional because you don't have a t chance to check everything. So you can imagine if you go fast, especially teams that really go fast, um, you can't have a lot of different moving parts within that offensive scheme. So going fast, uh, you, you can assume that these are not um, – these are not plays that you have to check. These are plays that are um, repeatable, if you will. And, and so that was part and parcel of the development of a quarterback that was learning the offense. Now that he is so much more comfortable within the structure of the offense, now you just don't have to go fast to go fast. He, he has a real good grasp of what we're doing, and now you can run the, the, the offense as a pace and change the pace as you see you you we did that in terms of running the football and and changing the pace that way and that's really the way we want to run the offense hey coach right up here um so the defense has only allowed or has allowed um early touchdowns within the last three games within the first two minutes um in the Ole Miss Florida and Tennessee games what can you kind of say about that pattern? And um, do you think it kind of served as a wake-up call for the defense early in the game? Or, and how do you think you can kind of prevent that pattern continuing against Alabama? Yeah. So, yeah, it's one of those conversations we had in coordinator, coordinators meeting. Um, 
you know, we went back and, and we, we went through the film again and again, and we, we actually, we did this as an exercise yesterday. We looked at all of those slow starts, and, and most of them are not physical, they're mental. Um, we felt like mentally, I mean, physically, we were really uh, ready to go. Um, so, you know, I, I think, you know, we just have to get our guys locked in mentally early on, and it just seems like they play better as they, they get into the game, but we just have to get over that in, in some fashion. It's not the bus, it's not the, pre, it's not the food, um, it's not the bed they sleep in. Um, it's just that they have to come, come at it with a different mindset because it's really a lot of mental errors, it's not physical errors. Uh, hey coach. Um, I think people on the outside would look at the win-loss and think y'all are further ahead than maybe people thought in year one y'all might be at this point. Is Does that match kind of the, are y'all on pace with where you wanted in terms of kind of building the foundation and kind of learning new habits and all that stuff? Or kind of is that a reflection of that or is there still work to be done there? Oh, there's, there's a lot of work to be done there. I mean, we're, I mean, recruiting for us has just started like this freshman class is the first class that we have gotten in the doors here and we only had a few months to recruit it. So, you know, our first true freshman class is coming up, you know, and so, um, you know, building, building your program is, is through recruiting as well. We're, we're establishing habits, we're establishing a standard, we're establishing those things. But that takes time, and we're making great progress. These kids have done everything we've asked them to do, um, but we're still, you know, obviously building this thing, and it's it's still going to take a while before we get to that point where, you know, everybody is is feeling like we have gotten the program to where it needs to be. Take two more, Ryan. Uh what were your thoughts on the fans rushing the field Saturday? I imagine that's not something you can... Yeah, I was really surprised. <laughs> I mean, I, I didn't expect it. I was doing an interview, and um, the the state police, you know, grabbed me and said, we got to go. And I was like, I didn't think the interview was that bad, you know. Um, and, and, and no, they, they were coming over the wall, and I, I just was surprised. Um, you know, it, it didn't appear to me that there was anything in my mind that, that, you know, that this would be a game where we would storm the field. But, hey, uh, let's, let's do more of it, I guess. I hope hey, I don't coach. get in trouble for that. <laughs> Probably, yeah. That's going viral. Is it? Damn. <laughs> All right, let's do more of it. <laughs> the commissioner is going to get me. I, I don't mean to do it. I mean, let's win more. Um. <laughs> Thank you for correcting me. <laughs> I meant it in all seriousness that we want to win more. That's all I meant. Thank you. Um. It's, a, it's an off week. I can be off, too. It's also your birthday, so. That's yeah. right. Um, what did you see out of Colby Richardson, like, this fall camp that made him earn, like, the starting spot at corner, and how has he developed and grown in that spot since? Well, he, he was a bit of a surprise, uh, obviously. Um, I, I think just the raw athletic ability and opportunity, right? I mean, we were really in a, in a tough spot there at the cornerback position. So I think opportunity, raw athletic ability, experience playing the position. And, and look, as I said, timing, right? All those things kind of played a really good role for him. Um, and, and now he's been able to you know, obviously come in and, and play for us with, you know, there's a bit of a rotation there, obviously, you know, uh, Converse has played a little bit of a safety position, which has been, you know, really helpful for us, but those guys are rotating in and out, but he's been a really um, pleasant surprise for us that, that he comes in and uh, is able to give us, you know, quality, quality play. Thank you. Great. Thank you.